Welcome to Interface's video on demand series. Today we're going to be talking about the Interface Model 9320 portable battery powered handheld digital indicator. Interface is based in Scottsdale, Arizona and we've been here since 1968 making force and torque transducers and the associated instrumentation. My name is Keith Skidmore and I'm a product manager here at Interface. I've been with Interface for about 15 years and part of my responsibilities include supporting our instrumentation product line. Features of the 9320 include a full seven digit display, dual range capability with unit labels, an environmentally sealed enclosure, peak, valley, and display hold button, a gross net button, and an impressive 45 hour battery life. The available RS-232 option allows easy data logging to any PC with an RS-232 port. Another interesting feature of the 9320 includes the ability to self-calibrate when connected to a TEDS-enabled load cell. When purchased together with a load cell and system setup, the system arrives ready to go right out of the box. Otherwise, it will be necessary to calibrate the 9320 with your chosen sensor. If purchased separately, you may have to install the included mating connector on the end of your load cell. The 9320 can be calibrated either by applying a known load or by using the millivolt per volt value from the load cell calibration certificate. First, the 9320 must be powered on by pressing and holding the power button. Once on, the calibration mode is entered by pressing and holding the two upper buttons. Once in the calibration menu, the check button is used to confirm a selection and the X is, moved, is used to move on. Sensitivity of 5.0 is correct, so we'll skip that. Set resolution. This is a 50 pound load cell and we want 0 0.01 pound resolution. You can see the resolution is already set, but if we wanted to change it, we would use the arrow buttons to change and then check to confirm. Calibrate, check to confirm. Now it asks if we want to do a live calibration with applied loads or not, and we don't. So we're going to press X, and now it says, do you want to do a table calibration? This is where you enter a millivolt per volt value. So we say yes to confirm. Now it asks for input low. Input low is typically going to be zero. The default is zero. Then it asks you for the display low. Again, default is zero, and that's typically the correct answer. So we'll confirm that. Now it asks for input high. This is the millivolt per volt value at the capacity of the sensor as listed on the calibration certificate. In this case, the load cell has a 3.123 millivolt per volt value. I've already entered that previously, but otherwise it's entered by using the arrow buttons. Check to confirm. Now display high is the capacity of the load cell. In this case, it's 50 pounds. So we'll move over to the correct position and enter 500 and hit check to confirm. Now it says done. That means the calibration is done. Hit check to confirm and we're now ready to go. You can see it's displaying 0 0.01 pounds. We can hit the net gross button to zero the display and now we're ready to take a measurement. I mentioned TEDS earlier but I'd like to briefly expand on that topic. TEDS stands for Transducer Electronic Data Sheet and it's a feature where a digital instrument can read a chip installed in the load cell, read the calibration characteristics of the load cell, and then self-calibrate. So basically when you plug in a load cell that has a TEDS chip installed and the TEDS feature is turned on in the meter, when the meter sees the TEDS chip, it finds it and self-calibrates and then you're ready to go. Now the real advantage of that is if you have multiple load cells and only one meter. Each time you hook up a new load cell, all you have to do is allow the TEDS feature to self-scale the indicator and then you're good to go. No complicated calibration procedure necessary. I'd like to briefly explain the functions of the buttons on the 9320. First off, the power button. Pressing and holding this button turns on and off the power. Starting at the top, there's a range button. This basically allows you to use two different ranges with the 9320. Pressing the button changes the range. You can calibrate two different ranges and that 
second range can be used for either a second load cell or for different units of kilograms. The hold button display holds. And what that does is if say you're adjusting a piece of equipment and you need to take a reading you can press the hold button and that holds the display until you press the button again. The gross net button is used for zeroing or tearing and it's recoverable so that you can tear and then you can untear by pressing the button again. Shunt cal connects a shunt resistor into the circuit and is handy for checking the setup after the system is calibrated. The peak button displays the peak value which was last recorded and you can see the display flashing that means it's in peak mode when you press the peak button again it goes out of peak mode. Same with valley. Look at the low reading and then when you press the button it goes back to current reading. While the 9320 is a great little handheld indicator, some applications require a benchtop or panel mount display. In those cases, please consider our model 9830, 9840, or 9850 indicators. The 9830 features 120 samples per second and has four set point outputs. The 9840 is geared toward calibration use, and the 9850 offers eight different types of channels for virtually any type of sensor. Look for interface video on demand segments on these products in the near future. If you have any questions regarding this product or others, please don't hesitate to contact us at 800-947-5598. You can also find us on the internet at interfaceforce.com or you can email me directly at keiths at interfaceforce.com. Thanks for watching.